With cameras now built into just about every smart device imaginable, compact cameras have really had to up their game to stay relevant in the market. And one device that did just that was Panasonic's TZ100. With its one inch sensor and 10 times optical zoom lens, it could produce some fantastic image quality. Well, today Panasonic have announced the successor to that camera, the TZ200. Now this is a travel zoom and it's aimed at those users who want an extremely lightweight and compact device, but one that's capable of tackling just about any subject that you may stumble across while exploring a new destination. I'm gonna put it through its paces here in Malta and I'm gonna be trying to complete my SNAP challenge while here. And SNAP stands for Street, Nighttime, Architecture and Portrait. And in the next 24 hours, I'm gonna use this camera to shoot them all. So I've just been trying to capture some images for the letter S and my theme of street photography. And I think when it comes to this kind of shots, there are two factors which can have a big influence. Firstly, are you able to spot those interesting characters and interesting scenes unfolding that are gonna result in a good image? And secondly, have you got a device that's gonna enable you to respond to it quick enough to capture the shot before the moment passes? And you know, traditionally that's not been an area where compacts have done you know, very well at all. With less buttons, less dedicated controls, you know, often you get lost in these complex menu systems and by the time you've responded to a scene, that moment has long since passed. This camera's slightly different. We've got a setting control dial around the barrel of the lens, a setting control dial on the back of the camera, and these are enabling me to really quickly change my shutter speed and aperture. So with all those controls, you can quite easily take full manual control of this camera if you like. There's also aperture priority, shutter priority, and several different automatic modes. There's touch focus on the rear display, or you can even switch it into manual focusing. This camera really does allow you to take as much or as little control of it as you like for your images. Now when it comes to my letter A and my image theme of architecture, I've really been spoilt for choice here in Valletta. This city has such a fantastic array of ancient architecture and some really nice modern pieces as well. And with this lens, I've been able to tackle it all in kind of any creative way that I've seen fit. At 24 millimeters, I can go nice and wide and get close for some dramatic perspectives. And at 360 millimeters, yes, this camera has a lens that's capable of 360 millimeters, I can pick off some nice distant details. Now this lens does have a variable aperture. It begins at f3.3 at the lens's widest and finishes at 6.4 when it's at its most telephoto. That's not quite as fast as the optic that was found in the TZ100. That had an aperture of f2.8 when the lens was at its widest. However, that said, this camera has a 15 times optical zoom, that camera had a 10 times optical zoom. So if you're looking for ultimate flexibility in focal length, this is gonna be the device for you. Now this camera is a travel zoom. It's not aimed at videographers. That said, with every new camera that hits the market now, there's an expectation that it's gonna have some reasonable video features. And this thing won't disappoint. It can shoot 4K at 30 frames per second, and the footage looks pretty good actually, or full HD at 60 frames per second. So if you want to do a little bit of slow motion work, you can with this. There's no headphone ports, there's no inputs for an external mic, but you know, if you just wanna take a few clips alongside your stills, then this is a very capable camera. So I've taken a few images now and I've taken a few portraits and already I'm really starting to see the image quality that this camera can produce on the back of the screen. It's got a 20.1 megapixel one inch MOS sensor and compared to the sensors that you find in mobile phones and cheaper compact cameras, you know, this sensor is substantially larger and that really can be seen 
when you look at the dynamic range of the images that this camera can produce. If the type of portraits that you'd like to take are self-portraits, then the fixed rear display is going to slightly frustrate you. That said, this camera does have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth low energy, so you can quickly sync it up with the Panasonic smartphone app, control your camera from that, set up your camera somewhere, and you'll still be able to take that perfect selfie if you want to. The TZ200 also has a macro mode that allows its users to focus on subjects as near as 3cm at the optics widest, or 100cm at its longest. Once activated, this can produce some impressive imagery of close-up subjects. The 3-inch rear display has a sharp 1.24 million dot resolution and it's been matched with a 0.21-inch EVF that carries a resolution of 2.33 million dots. The camera's battery is charged in camera using the same micro USB input as most Android smart devices. This means that you can charge the device on the fly with a portable charger and may mean that you don't have to take quite so many power leads away with you on a trip. Battery life is officially rated for 350 shots from fully charged, but through the course of the day I managed to take far more images than that. Now I think I may have just found my location for the letter N or my nightscape image and that's this spot right here. Now as you can see behind me I've got a wonderful view of the city of Valletta, beautiful cityscape and I hope that once it gets dark that's all going to get lit up really nicely and uh, I'm going to hopefully get a great shot. But this kind of image is going to require me to use a higher ISO level than I have been using throughout the course of the day when I've been taking my street shots and portraits. This camera has a native ISO range of 125 to 12,800. That's double the level that was found in the Panasonic TZ100. Now, you probably won't want to use that top level. You're probably going to get quite noisy results from it. But it does suggest that Panasonic are more confident in this device's ability at mid-level ISOs, things like 800 and 1600, than they were in the previous device. And certainly, you're going to get much cleaner results in low light conditions than you would with a mobile phone. So that's my 24 hours in Malta and my snap challenge complete and I have to say that this little device has really impressed me despite all those different shooting situations that I chucked at it it's managed to cope really well and in fact you know I'm really pleased with some of those images that I've got now okay in terms of image quality this thing is not going to replace your CSC or DSLR but if you're going away on a trip like this where it's just not practical to take your larger setup and all the lenses and chargers and tripods and stuff that go with it this thing is still going to do a really good job of getting you some shots that you can be proud of taking. And compared to a mobile phone, the, there are images I've, I've captured with this which you just wouldn't be able to achieve with a mobile phone. You know, fixed lenses on mobile phones are great for a few little snaps of friends and stuff like that, but they're not so good when you're trying to produce a variety of shots. I think this thing has really quite impressed me. So for more information about the TZ200, visit wex.co.uk.